Good morning everyone and today we're checking out a brand new video from Pop Rock Studios, the next part in the Summer's Beast story. Mission, I guess? Either way, let's hop in and check out these fan-made My Singing Monsters. Today's episode is a continuation from Monday of June's Community Redraw, as well as being the fourth episode in my Summoner's Beast storyline. The creatures drawn were My Singing Monsters-like submissions sent in by subscribers. They're being made more monstrous and worked into today's story. I hope you all enjoy. Hit like oh, I know we will. if you want. Subscribe, Subscribe if, if you feel, feel like. like. Either, Either way, way, enjoy, enjoy the, the show. show. Both Dresden's and my prior feelings of excitement had faded, and 40 minutes into oh, the battle we, we were go. each simply wondering, how much longer can they possibly go? At this point, perhaps we should simply force them to stop? <laughs> Dresden suggested. Whoops. I believe you're right, they've both proven to be as equally matched, or at least as equally strong-willed as any two beasts can be. Dresden's creature companion, Val, and my man Tarragon, Wellerman, had been mm -hmm. brawling for so long, and yet both creatures still had a surprising amount of vitality remaining. I wasn't oh, sure if I should be stopping. concerned that Wellerman <laughs> hadn't been able to defeat Val, but the Chimeric Canine had shown an incredible degree of might. I'd have considered making it one of my summons for my pending battle with the Archon Demon Torali, but I knew it would not be reliable to try and call it away from Dresden, given their bond. I tried telling Wellerman to stand bottom. down, but he simply went in for another attack, clearly not satisfied with the idea of a draw. I was about to start singing the song that always calmed him, off which he was named, but decided instead to see if he would respond to an- If you haven't listened to Wellerman, you're missing out. Go listen to it, then come back here, then continue on. Another melody. Admittedly, though, it was of similar stylings to the prior song used, as it was one I'd also learned from my love Kayla during her sea shanty phase. She's a fast clipper ship and a bully good crew. Away, Santiana, Ooh. and an old salty hank for a captain. I love this one, along the but I can't remember of it. Mexico. Well, heave her up and away we'll go. Away, Santiana. Heave her up and away we'll go along the plains of Mexico. Unsurprisingly, oh this song God, worked one. just as well, and <laughs> Wellerman finally gave one last snarl to Val, then started marching back towards me. Through its panting, Val let out a sound like a laughing hyena, and Wellerman quickly <laughs> turned back. I sang one more verse, though, and again, Wellerman was willing to retreat. I thanked Dresden and Val for the battle and for all their help that day, then took Wellerman home oh, to my Val. dimension for some much-needed rest and recovery. I also checked in on both Violet and my latest summon, a creature called a Pharaoh Ant, that I decided to give the name Antet. Despite the creature Ooh, not Antet. being native like to our it. world, it was clearly settling in nicely. By the next day, the injuries Wellerman had acquired in battle were already nearly healed. I asked if it was ready for more training, and it promptly nudged me with its head, as if to say, Yes, yes, come on already. <laughs> Lead the way. I deemed it was finally time to go back to my first plan and seek out some colossal creatures the kaiju of Heath Hurricane Reynolds' world. Though, okay. that isn't quite where we ended up. I transported oh. us both back to the base of my interdimensional allies, left Wellerman outside, and upon searching the building for Heath, saw him nowhere. I considered messaging him on our interdimensional yeah, wristwatches, but before I could, I found the maker of the watches, Benny Sharp, chatting with another overseer of our group, oh, hey, Astra. Benny. I approached as Mr. Sharp was wrapping up a tail. So I says to the little guy, I get that they may be delicious in the dungeon, but would it be considered delicious, you know, everywhere, not just as scavenged camping grub? But they <laughs> was right, that living armor was surprisingly tasty. Astra shook her living head with armor. a grin. Oh, Benny, I don't know if... That's an anime reference. ...if I believe half the stories you tell, but it's always more fun to pretend I believe them. Hey, Taryn, how's your definitely not a Pokemon adventure going? <laughs> it's good, thank you. Though I was hoping to find Heath to go train my first summon of the team, Wellerman, against some kaiju to truly test its might. Wellerman? Why'd you call him that? Is he an employee of an 1800s Australian shipping company? <laughs> well, um, no. When he isn't <laughs> responding to my commands, I sing sea shanties for him, and that always soothes him into listening. I wish someone would sing sea shanties to me to soothe me when I didn't feel like doing things. Well, if it likes music, maybe you could take it to face some singing kaiju. Benny and I know where you could find some of those. Remember, oh. Benny? 
Oh yeah, where was that? Dimension uh, K413? Uh, Astra and I was hopping around to other dimensions this one time when we was bored, and we found a world that's kinda like Heath's, hmm. where there's, you know, lots of giant monsters stomping around on modern day cities and whatnot. But in this world, things was never overrun completely, because they had these funky, friendly kaiju that sing and play music and stuff with instruments they got built into their bodies. They use the music to scare off the bad- You mean like the singing giants of legend from, uh, uh Taven's world? Kaiju, and I guess probably just for entertaining folks too, I don't know. Actually, Taren, come to think of it, they're pretty similar to that old singing monster religion in your world. The... The... The monsters of, of the Colossals. Anyway, as usual, Dr. Champagne said they sounded a lot like some video game from his world that he seemed to have a weirdly extensive knowledge of. Uh, what was it called? Oh, right, I remembered that. He said it was called My Swingin' Mongrels. Uh, that no. doesn't sound right, but I don't care enough to think more about it. So yes, My Swinging Mongrels. My oh, instincts to explore Benny. monsters of new worlds took over once again, and I said, that sounds incredible. Of course, if those monsters are the heroes of that world, I wouldn't want to attack one, but I'd love to visit that world and see some of them, and possibly have Wellerman challenge one of the more dangerous kaiju there. Would one or both of you, you be interested know. in showing me this world? Hey, it's like my ma always says, if you're feeling bored, go kick a gourd. Uh, kicking what? a gourd is an expression from my world for doing whatever the first thing someone suggests you do. No, oh, Benny, I don't believe that at all, but I also don't care, I love it. Let's go kick a gourd. <laughs> Benny popped back to his dimension to put on one of his many I neck like armors this. in case he needed it. Then we gathered outside with Wellerman. I opened a portal for us all to K413, and surprisingly, we stepped through into a city that was in chaos. People were sprinting towards the outskirts as fast as they could, leaping over cars and falling over, and upon seeing Wellerman, they were even more terrified. Astra and I climbed onto Wellerman's back, and Benny used his mech armor, and we all flew up onto the roof of the tallest nearby skyscraper. We were near the edge of the city, and in the city's center we could see a bird kaiju of likely around 140 feet, with a flute-like mm. snout and a mouth on its chest. It was playing a menacing tune, flying over the city center. It then swooped down and crashed its body into the top of a building, knocking part of it over and sending debris falling down to the streets. Uh -oh. I thought you two said the musical kaiju here were aids to humanity. Yeah, that's weird. I wasn't coming here expecting to see a heel turn. I can get onto this world's internet and figure out what's up, but this is pretty perfect anyway, right? You wanted a kaiju to fight, and Flutie Toot here is serving itself up right on a silver splatter. I suppose right. you're right. It's almost alarmingly coincidental that we arrive as a kaiju is attacking right near where we arrived. I mean, at this point, I just kind of accepted that we fall into convenient kawinky dinks more often than anime dudes fall into pairs of boots. I didn't hear the end of Ben's uh, comparison <laughs> as I began casting my summon on Wellerman, so I could put... Weirdly enough, he is not wrong. <laughs> a ...part of my consciousness in his body to see, hear, and feel through him. Then, send him off to face this beast, not realizing that it was only the herald of the real threat to come. Ooh. So this is a silver circle, huh? Alright, what's the Galactus? <laughs> Alright, moving on. Next! Wellerman ripped through the air towards the bird beast and didn't- Wait, 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 wait. There's no way this red panda tanuki looking guy is the boss. It's slow in the slightest. Even when the kaiju noticed him, Wellerman just tackled right into its stomach. Despite being a quarter the creature's size, it hit like a meteorite and ceased the creature's song. It began falling towards the ground, but quickly recovered flight and snapped its beak at Wellerman. He evaded, then whipped around and smacked his tail into the creature's side. That hit wasn't nearly as hard, but still pushed the creature enough to bump its wing into a low building, throwing it off its flight. It opened its oh, beak it and clawed out a menacing melody, but Wellerman just spat a beam of freezing water into its mouth and it started choking on it. Ah, Back on our building perch, Benny was using his mech armor as binoculars to watch and said, Wow, damn, little guy of yours really packs a punch. He does continue to impress me, I replied. Astra, I'm sure you're eager to help, but please allow Wellerman to try handling this himself for a while. This is essential training for our battle with Torlai. Oh, darn, I was really hoping to do stuff, but if you insist, I can <laughs> do nothing instead and just enjoy the show. She sprouted a steaming dragon tail from her lower back and essentially started using it as a lounge chair to lay back and observe. <laughs> Wellerman continued to wallop this beast, 
but soon we felt the ground shake. It shook repeatedly, and we turned to see that a colossal, 350-foot-tall red panda-like kaiju was stomping its way into the city towards the brawl. Ooh. Though we did All see right. that it was actively avoiding walking in areas where people were still fleeing. A helicopter suddenly flew over us, and through a speaker system yelled out, What are you people doing? You must evacuate the city now. The Wakan Beta will be here within minutes, and Panchakuta may not be able to stop it. All civilians must evacuate. Walking beta. Hey, look at that. We got Panchuda? monster names, everybody. Panchetta and Wakan uh, something. Then he suddenly spoke into his thumb, huh. and that apparently activated his speaker system on his mech. Don't worry, Mr. Helicopter. We're here to help. That little monster fighting the flute face is one of ours. Hey, though, we thought the singing kaiju was good guys in this world, so uh, what's the word on that bird, huh? <laughs> How are you... Uh, are you serious? Do you live under a rock? Furutori got hypnotized into being the Herald of Wakan Beta months ago. Watch the news. Uh, yeah, no uh. thanks, Mr. Helicopter. I don't even watch the news in my dimension. What do you mean by dimension? And m my name isn't Mr. Helicopter, it's Gershwin Amblecrombie. Oh my- Goshwin Ambokrami. <laughs> okay, no. We're just gonna stick to calling you Mr. Helicopter. My toasties, that- wow. Benny and Astra both started <laughs> clapping. That right there is a name. Oh, too bad I already <laughs> locked in Mr. Helicopter for you, cause your real name is going right near the top of my list. That is probably the best new name I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, well, wait there, Astra. I mean, come on, Grapefruit Melancholy to 16th? That still holds first place. That's oh, the yeah, kind no. of name that you want to come across in every lifetime. But Gershwin Amblecrombie is certainly way up there. As that conversation yeah, was second. transpiring, Wellerman had retreated slightly to see what this approaching titanic panda would do. Despite its large and rotund size, it proved to be incredibly nimble. It leapt into the air, flipped over, and smacked a furry tail as large as its body onto Furutori and knocked it to the oh, ground, damn. then used that tail to pin it down. Wellerman then dove straight towards the helpless bird's head to finish it off, but the panda growled a sort of musical growl and slapped its stomach like a drum. That caused Wellerman to stop his descent, and he looked up at the panda curiously. So the panda is one of the singing monsters, but it's just not under the control of this... Beta punch of whatever the heck. Clearly seeming to enjoy the music. My assumption was Panchakuta was simply trying to restrain this creature. If what Mr. Amblecrombie said was correct, the Furutori was not in control of its actions. And soon, we got to see what was. Panchakuta gestured its head upwards, and Wellerman followed its gaze. I then noticed that more music was coming from above, but music that was cutting in and out and run backwards then forwards. A pale and purple, unearthly creature, unlike anything I'd seen, was descending from the sky, causing this sound. It had purple claws and was scratching what looked to me somewhat like drums, but from that was making okay. a myriad of odd noises. One of the sounds being like an altered version of the Furutori's own music. It was Ooh. as if it was playing reiterated versions of other creatures' songs. When it was a few hundred feet oh, above no. Wellerman and the Panda Titan, it sang out a strange alien tune, then rapidly scratched a nail along its instrument. A massive green shockwave shot from it down into the city. Windows shattered, some buildings were sliced through. Oh, Wellerman God. was sent tumbling backwards when struck and nearly crashed into a building. But luckily, Panchakuta stuck out a meaty paw and cushioned Wellerman's impact. As the bizarre beast was descending further, Benny called up to the helicopter again. Hey, uh, Mr. Helicopter, are we right in assuming that that thing is the, uh, Waka Waka Africa thing you was talking about? <laughs> I am not here to feed you information. Get out of the city now. The Wakan Beta came from outer space months ago and has been on a rampage ever since. This is a dire circumstance. Every Utakaiju it faces, it kills, unless it can mind control it. You are in grave danger and must leave now. Then he turned off his speaker and turned to Astra. Says he ain't here to give us info, then gives us plenty. We should have called this guy Mr. Exposition. He turned back <laughs> on his speaker and said, It got any weaknesses that we should know about? Why would you need... To... 
It is not particularly durable, but is usually able to avoid being hit by hovering above or away from Utakaiju attacking it. Ah. That was useful to know. So it doesn't have very high defense, but it keeps its distance. It seemed Wellerman's speed could be a major asset. Panjakuda drummed on its stomach and bellowed out more music, like a battle cry. Wellerman then darted through the city streets near the ground, staying as far out of sight as it could. Thankfully, the Wakan Beta was more focused on the massive panda. It scratched its own music once more, descending farther into the city. The Panchakuta ran towards it and leapt, spinning sideways, with its tail effortlessly knocking the top off of a building as it careened towards the alien beast. Good, Unfortunately, good. the Wakan Beta let loose another burst of electric green shockwave, but targeted directly at the approaching Titan. Panchakuta was immediately knocked backwards and crashed to the ground, quaking the entire city. The Wakan Beta Oof. flew up and over it, scratching more and more, sending a barrage of green bolts at its downed foe, battering it and keeping it from getting up. It grinned widely, seeming to enjoy the pain it was inflicting. But that also meant it was far too focused on its downed foe to see the rapidly approaching man's Haragon soaring up behind it. I really hope he takes this uh, walking beta thing as the uh, summon because, well, for one, it's an evil man and it needs to be taken out of this dimension. Fast. Wellerman had soared up out of the city and was headed right Waka towards Yoka. the walking beta's huh. back, instinctively just staying slow enough to not break the sound barrier. It was aimed towards the creature's long, eerie neck and opened its maw wide. But my heart nearly stopped as the hovering titan swung its claw backwards right towards Wellerman's chest. He oh, dodged no. just in time and the claw barely scratched along his stomach, but it was enough to make him spin out and crash through the top of a building into a now destroyed office space. Oh, damn. The walking beta then fired more green shockwaves into lower parts of that building. The entire thing started to crumble. The full floor above Wellerman collapsed on him, but he managed to tear his way through and leap out into the air again. Dust swirled off him, and the walking beta tried shooting more green bolts into Wellerman's path. You can do this, Thanks to the distraction, Panchakuda had been able to get up and leapt forward to snatch its jaw onto the lowest part of walking beta's tail. The alien beast shrieked out furiously, then swung the instrument at the end of its tail onto Panchakuda's head. It seemed to hurt, but the beast held tight with its teeth and yanked down, pulling the walking oh, beta closer to the street. Again, it smacked Panchakuda in the head, but then saw Wellerman headed towards it this time at full speed. It tried to raise its instrument for use, but Panchakuti yanked Wellman, use Aqua Jet! down on its tail to keep it out of reach. Instead, Walken Beta swung its claws towards Wellerman, but he spun around both and tackled right into the monster's chest. My and Wellerman's bodies both felt as though we'd been hit by boulders, oh, but the tackle was heavy. clearly effective. Panchakuti released its bite and the hovering beast fell towards the street. As it crashed down to the concrete, Wellerman bit into its neck and started clawing at it, cutting huge gashes into it. It swung its instrument up and this time was finally able to strike Wellerman with it and send him tumbling back across the road, but he quickly Ow. recovered. Bleeding and angry, the walking beta hovered up to try and get away. You know what? I take back what I said. Kill this thing. Away, and as it did, it scratched another massive shockwave out, cutting through the base of every building within a block, sending all of them falling down around Wellerman. He dodged around the falling buildings, but Panchakuda stomped right through them, smacking them out of the way. Then, he leapt up and flipped once more, smacking his tail into the fleeing creature. Walken Beta rolled through the air, and by the time it regained composure, Panchakuda was on it again, leaping over it and with the full weight of its massive size, uh -uh. body slamming the beast right down into the pavement. Body the shockwave body blew slam. back much of the debris that had just fallen, and I was concerned that our building may fall over from how much it was shaken, even at the distance we were at. The Panchakuta just lay there for a moment on top of its foe, as if waiting to see if it was able to move. Hmm. Wellerman was flying above nearby, impatiently waiting. Finally, Panchakuta got up. Whether it was the weight of the right, slam or the damage Wellerman had done to its neck, the alien kaiju was indeed finished. Yeah, so to be further proof of this, the Furutori got up soon after, and no longer showed any signs of hostility towards the city. Oof. In fact, it flew right over to the Panchakuta and rubbed its head against the creature, as if to thank it. Back on our building perch, I yeah, turned to my allies close. and asked, Astra, Mr. Sharp, can you get me over there? I think I should see if I can make this Panchakuta creature a summon as well. Wellerman seems to get along with it, and it showed impressive strength. 
Show it, baby. Hey, yo, uh, Mr. Helicopter. We're gonna go make friends with that. Probably a normal fighting type. Big kaiju, since my buddy's dragon seems to be friends with him now. Type. And they could probably help in the Pokemon battle against an interdimensional demon he's got coming up. But it was nice to meet you. Astra suddenly transformed <laughs> into her steaming dragon state, and I leapt on to one of her claws. Who or what are you people? Then he flew on behind us in his mech suit. Where to shop, gang, and don't you forget it. Tell the other <laughs> helicopters about us, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Astra dropped me down on the closest still God, I love building to the He's awesome. I released my summon on Wellerman, then spun my overseer runes and projected an image of Toralai's demons into the mind of the Panda Titan. Panchakuda, you are clearly a mighty protector. I could use your help in protecting my own world from a team of fierce monsters that threaten it. If you're willing, I'd like to align with you so I can summon you to help with threats in my and Wellerman's world. Could I rely on you to answer my calls? A calming sound rumbled out of its throat, and it looked from Wellerman back to me. It then released another musical growl that seemed to be an affirmative response. It you leaned its massive head towards the building I was on, and I was able to place my palm on its snout. I cast the alignment and suddenly had a third member of my summon party. Well, all I needed right. to train with them all for- That's three down, three to go. Further still, I only needed two more before I was ready to test them against the legendary beast Gojiralith in my world, then face Toralai. Though soon okay. after making this alignment, I noticed that a message was ringing on my own wristwatch as well as that of Astra and Benny. It was a recording just sent by our group's field leader, Alexis Jones. Tehran oh. is needed immediately at the shark tank. If you hear this, Tehran, or if anyone with him does, get here as soon as possible. I quickly turned back to Panchakuda and said, Thank you for your alignment. I will call on you for training later. Then, I made a portal back to A016, and we all rushed back to the shark tank. Get we opened on, the main boys. doors and saw many of our allies there, facing away from us into the hallway, most in battle stances. Some looked back, but I couldn't see through the crowd to see what they were all facing. What is it? What's wrong? What am I needed for? Ah, oh, there you are, Taren. The crowd split enough that I could see the Archon Demon, Toralai, oh, standing crap. with her arms crossed. Figured this would be the fastest way to find ya, and hoped your little friends here would be honorable enough to keep with our agreement. But before we get to our battle, it seems you and me might have to do a little bit of work together on a problem. Wait, what? What do you mean? Why would we need to work together on Again? anything? Well, we both want your world to stay safe for a sort of different reasons, but either way, it's a problem for both of us that Cypheramov just showed up in it, and oh, is about crap. to start wreaking all kinds of havoc. For a moment, I felt as though I may fall backwards. Now, not one, but two Archon Demons had come to my world? So what say we put our little challenge on pause and work together to kick my annoying sister right the heck out of our world? Hmm? Uh, I looked fine. around at the group as if go anyone kill. may tell me what I should do. But truly, I already knew my answer. I had been a bit curious to find a way to learn more about Toralai and her intentions. This could be the perfect situation for that. Despite the dire yeah, circumstances, I finally replied, Well, to use an alleged phrase from Mr. Sharp's world, <laughs> let's kick a gourd. <laughs> oh, I like that saying. I may actually start using that. I'm not sure. If you thought like that Waka this. Yaku was cool, that last creature that I was redrawing, I highly recommend you check out the video of it, as well as the whole playlist that it's in. I'm linking both. Because, see, that submission was sent to me by Ramenations, who has animated oh. a whole bunch of different collaborative My Singing Monsters creatures, That's made with other cool. fans of My Singing Monsters. The Wakayaka specifically was made in collaboration with Jake the Drake, and was actually designed, composed, and written by Exclaim. So again, I'll link oh. Exclaim's specific a video walk. of the Wakayaka, but I'd recommend checking out that whole playlist of different My Singing Monsters animated collaborations. Huge thank you for that submission, and a huge thank you to our other submissions that were redrawn in this episode, <laughs> Rose Hio, and Interdimensional Music, who also has a channel making lots of cool music and My oh. Singing Monsters stuff. So okay. I'll link that channel as well, and you might want to check it out too. And if you want more videos like this, you might want to go back to Monday's video where I was doing this same kind of thing, but with subscriber-designed Pokemon creatures. <laughs> or just go back to the beginning of the Summoner's Beast storyline, because well, this, this whole series has some fun art and story in it so far.
Also, as always, all the art and inks will be going up for free on the Popcraft Studios Patreon. There's a $1 tier, but you don't need to be on that tier to get access to all the different stuff on there. It's totally free. Art and inks will yep. go up tomorrow. If you didn't see the last episode, here's the prompt for next month's community redraw. I explained it more in the last episode, but I'm excited to see what mm -hmm. people submit. And besides that, that's all for today, except, of course, for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is something I heard this week from a man named Peter Crone, who I'm oh. a big fan fan of. I don't know exactly what to call him. Calling him a life coach doesn't feel quite right, but I guess we'll say he's a life coach for some very quote-unquote successful people. Because oh. the thing I want to share that he shared is, well, he works with a bunch of different billionaires. He said, especially oh, yeah. when he started working with a bunch of them, he doesn't consider them to be successful. Because true success is not solely about how much money you have. Money is an important part of the world right. we live in right now, and having more of it can help you do good things for other people, but don't consider money to be the be-all, end-all version of success, because true success is so much more about being happy with who you are and what you're doing and what you're mm -hmm. contributing. True success is it's having a feeling happy. of being at peace. I hope that's inspiring. Right, that's I love really you all, good. and we'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Oop. All right, everyone, that's going to be the end of today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed this. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original video in the description below. And I'll see all of y'all next week when we flick back on. Till then, this is Fox signing out. Peace.